and um, I was walking in a house and a girl came to me and kind of doing her thing to dance with me or something and she took a knife out and she stabbed me in my stomach and I remember feeling the pain and looking at my stomach and the blood flowing and stumbling from wall to wall and walking outside of the house and looking at the sky and it was so dark except for a light there was a light in the sky and it was calling my soul and my soul lifted up and went straight and then I woke up this was a dream that I had and some of them might be like, whoa, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so let me go back, but before I do that, you know, there's nothing wrong with dreams. Of course, you don't make something with Sharia upon it, but the Prophet said that the importance of dreams, and it's narrated in the tariq of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimullah in the seerah, that he used to have a dream with the Prophet every day sometimes, every night. And we know Uthman radiallahu before he died, also during the process and so let's take it back before you understand what this dream means and, and what's the importance of it and it's very hard for me to stand here actually and as you've seen subhanallah brothers this is like the story of our life yet we're like dumbfounded sometimes speechless to say it get so emotional you forget you try to remember and every time I try to say my story, I keep forgetting some of the details. And sometimes just for a normal day, I remember just flashbacks of, of this life before and things that happen. Or someone reminds me of something, like my mother or family. And then I say, yeah, this is what happened. So I was born in Romania, 1983. And if you know anything about the history of Eastern Europe, it's been plagued by lies. And I say this without any hold back. And I remember very well going to school and being taught that the Turks are pagans. And they're these Turks and they're Muslim and they worship the moon and they're trying to take over the world and try to push over the cross and the religion of Jesus and that we should fight them and all these propaganda and nonsense and of course what do you do? What, what people do today when you hear something when you hear the TV speaking you gotta believe it that's like the main sheikh right? TV your teacher someone they look forward to the culture the going trend at that time, what people say, the music, the poetry, it's just part of the fabric. So I remember learning poetry about Muslims, about the Romanian army visiting the Muslims. Here comes a peace treaty or a group of people and Bayezid, it was the name of the Sultan at that time, of the Turks, looks at these Romanians like, Shh, who are you? Get out of my face. Like, that's what Muslims do. And you know, we used to be fed and spoon-fed this history to the point we used to say to someone who is a bit slow of mind or something, like, what are you, Turk or something? Really? So imagine growing up in that society, being brought up like that. This is what your general Eastern European believes about Islam. And of course, this is what your general Western believes about Islam now, after 9-11. What Fox News is showing, that's the truth. Flying planes into buildings and screaming. The same picture, you type Islam in Google, the same picture, the same guy, the same beard comes up like, spelling, you know, with like misspelled, you know, death to America or something. It's like misspelled, like death, like D-E-T-H or something like that, right? Isn't it? 
this is sing music. Ah. It's like, like the loudest scream. It's like they're waiting for that, you know. Isn't it? So that was the environment, part of the environment. And I've never actually met a Muslim in my life. But there are some things, and you have to understand, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides. We need to know that. Be it through a stop sign, be it through anything, Allah can guide, and He guides. And when you look back, you see, it can be, subhanAllah, through a non-Muslim that Allah will guide you. I've met people who have become who have become Muslim because of the Bible. So I remember this very clearly and vividly. Taking a bus ride with my grandmother and my grandfather, who just recently passed away, and passing by my grandfather's church, and I was brought up in a family that was mixed Catholic, Orthodox, and what's called. Unitarian. Unitarian is like the, a very small fraction of Eastern European branch of Christianity which still follows somehow that there's only one God and that Jesus is not God and so on. And I remember it was night and we're driving in the bus going to one of our ends and I'm looking and he said, oh, this is my church and you were baptized in this church. And I said, and my grandma, you know, from back, she's like, no, he's Baptist in all three churches. Or, you know, kind of like. And she didn't, like, let him talk about it for some reason. She was very strong Catholic. And I asked him, like, why, why isn't there, there's no, there's no cross on the church? And he said, we don't believe in that. And my grandma didn't let him talk anymore. And that incident s stuck with me for a long time. Because it was the only time, the first time actually, that I was exposed to something different other than I was used to. What? You don't believe in the Trinity? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. It's like, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I, it was, to me, it was strange. But it stuck with me. The other thing that I remember so vividly, again, which is related to Islam, there used to be this show. I don't remember if it was like National Geographic or something along those lines, like National Geographic. And it was coming on Sunday at like 3 o'clock. I used to rush to see it because I used to love, there was one part, it would show like parts from different parts of the world, you know, different clips. And one of the clips was, I think it was a masjid, either in Iraq or in Somalia. And the Muaddin was calling me like that. And I just, looked, for some reason, I love seeing that. And hearing that call, you know, Allah. And then you really just switch, just like for like two seconds. But I was always rushed, and I didn't watch the rest of the show, but I, I would like to watch that one part for some reason. Like, this guy looks, I don't know, there's something about it. There's something about this guy screaming out his lungs from the top of a, you know, and calling people to prayer. And then, later on, the conflict in Bosnia started. And there's the Bosnian Muslims being shown on a TV, you know. Big beards and those nice like furry hats. You, you, you know those furry hats? Have you ever seen? Like the Chechens, you know? The, the Chechens and Bosnia, even Romanians and, and Russians. And I used to look at them like, man, there's something about it. Their beards, their faces. And they're being portrayed like, oh, these, you know, they're fighting. And, and just, it felt to me that these people are not getting a fair deal. And I was looking at them with some kind of admiration. Like these are. This is how real men look like. For some reason, I don't know. It was just something. Yeah, I mean, but just try to follow me because all these pieces, I'll try to put them together. And I'm a master of uh, going around and uh, you know, getting off track. But just bear with me. I'll try to put the pieces together, inshallah. So this is the environment. This is the, my exposure to Islam. And which is interesting because I, my family was practicing. But we couldn't say that we're like, you know, real deep Christians. Even though my grandfather or my grandmother was really religious, Catholic, and on my mother's side also my grandmother was religious, they would go to church and so on and so forth. But you know, uh, 
after communism in Romania, religion was kind of like a taboo and people were not really going to church anymore and, and so on and so forth. So that was something that was left with me. Now, something interesting happened. And again, look at this. This is subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides. For about seven years consecutively, I broke something like my shoulder, my head, my leg, my, uh, my arm. Like I had about 11 fractures altogether. And I remember the doctor saying like, what are you trying to get into like the Guinness Book of Records or something like that, you know? She said, please don't come here anymore. It was like, you know, it's like the same, you know, this city, same lady putting the cast, you know? And she's like, you again? Come on, like you're made out of grass or something. But you know what happened though? There's a trend that I noticed after a few years. You know what day I used to break or this absence used to happen? On Sunday. On Sunday. And I was like, Sunday. And then at one time, I don't know, I'm just sitting here. I'm like, maybe God is punishing me because I'm not going to church. Think about it. And you know, this is, as the brother said, you know, I'm, we shouldn't underestimate children. There's some very deep thinking that can go on the child's mind. And I said, I'm going to start going to church. And I did. And I used to take the kids around the neighborhood, collect some of them and go to church and like make like own church gang or something like that. And I'd go to church and like just infiltrate in the choir and sing, ah, you know, and whatnot. And we used to like it. And somehow I fell in love with God. Like I used to really, really pray and stop on my way to school and pray to statues and St. Peter and St. this and St. that. But not so much. I, I didn't realize so much that I wasn't attracted to these statues, to these things. I more, my heart was longing somehow for God. And I couldn't yet figure out the fog of why these things are there. Yet my soul wants to pray to God. My soul is not really convinced of this whole <coughs> trinity and this, all these saints and so on and so forth. So this is something that, again, was stuck with me. Now, again, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into too many details. But there was another incident that took place, another accident. And as the brother's power, you can see like a connection sometimes between the story. The stories are so different, it's such different style. Yet there's somehow an underlying connection between the stories in the search of this truth. So I woke up and it was again Sunday. So I guess going to church didn't, didn't change anything. But I climbed a tree and the branch, and I used to love to climb trees, you know, I loved it. It was something about just going up in heights. And the, that branch that I stepped on that day was not too strong and it broke and I fell all the way down and I fell into a, a like a, a metal piece and it stabbed me inside and then I kind of like I felt it and I pulled myself out and I kind of looked and I didn't see blood so I was like okay I'm okay you know and then the kids were like ah what are you doing nice fall you know and I'm like good job but do it again you know we play <laughs> And they're like, come play soccer. Let's play for you know, soccer. I'm like, okay. So I started playing soccer. I started feeling dizzy, you know? I started getting dizzy. I'm like, I don't feel good. I think this is falling, you know? It's not good. So I went to my grandmother and I told her and she checked my body and then she saw the. And then she said, okay, I gotta take it off. So she took me to the hospital very fast. The doctor, you know, looked at me and said, what are you doing, man? He's like, you're gonna die. And I'm sitting there, you know, kind of like in between. And that's all I remember is they put that mask on me and done. And then I woke up after I don't know how many days, weeks, whatever happened. And it was such a weird thing. And then the doctor came in and he said, you know, you're lucky. And of course, we don't believe in luck. They say, you're lucky. You know, we operated for four hours. And you, know, you rupture this inside and then inside, cut this and that, you know. And he's like, you're lucky that you're alive. And I remember those two months or a month and a half that I spent in the hospital, just 
think, you know,